Gig Gab, the podcast, the show for working musicians, episode 269 for Monday, August 31st, 2020. Folks, and welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. How's Napomo treating you today, my friend? I just love saying it. I know you um, do. It's it, 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 like <laughs> Napomo. It's got a good mouthfeel. It's good. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Uh, it, it's treating me great. My daughter's visiting down here. She drove down from San Francisco. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, we're, I'm very happy here. It's interesting. I've started... Uh, Facebook and all its infinite wisdom. I changed my the town that I live in in my profile on Facebook, and it created a post for me that said Paul moved to Napomo. Right? Oh, of course it did. And that yeah. got so it, it kind of got announced, and I was really kind of consciously trying to, you know, yeah, not not I, make I, a big deal let, out of it. Yeah, yeah, because because you know my friends up there know sure, and the people who follow me for music stuff they don't need to know. They don't right? know, and, and in fact, it could be it, well, it, it, it could be a liability in the in the terms of like, now you have to explain, don't worry, the well, band's still it. playing, right? Like if you, that's if, if the thousand post, times. yep. So, yep. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, it created a post and you know, a lot of people asked, you know, Hey, where's Napomo? What's going on? Good. But the, the, the biggest silver lining to that is I had several friends who were like, Oh, I know some cool musicians down there. Let me introduce you. Ha-ha. So that actually kind of a little bit of a spark of Offset the liability. Happening. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, That's so great. my buddy Ian Haworth from DigiDesign who knows very many people um, connected me with a couple of people who, you know, have invited me to jam and, you know, kind of get to know the lay of the land down here, which is kind of a cool thing. That's great. Um, oh, that's yeah, good, yeah. man. That, no, like that's networking is the key, right? To, to, I mean, we talk about this on the show all the time, but you know, getting a gig, you can put it on Craigslist. And I mean, certainly, you know, if that's, if that's the best option, then absolutely take it. I've found some great gigs that way. Uh, but if you have, you know, somebody vouching for you coming in. That's, that's huge. That's great. Yeah. <sighs> that's good. Man. I got a. am going to, I have a needle of work done on a guitar. There's a really good guitar shop in Arroyo Grande um, called lightning Joe's. And so I'm going to um, go over there and get some work and, you know, just kind of pick their brains yeah. as, to, as to what's going on. And so we got that and I gave my card out to a couple of places that, you know, they can't do music right now, but you know, I said, I'm new here. So the, it's begun. And, uh, you know, I built up quite a bit of fear that I was going to be dead in the water, you know, and, and not be able to get it going. I mean, right. I'm a fairly confident guy, but this is, you know, that's a huge change. From, oh, dude. Starting from scratch yeah. after, you know, after building something for 20 years, I and guess you could have taken one or two doors. If I did it once, I could do it again. Or you'd be like, oh my God, I'm I starting to you know, do it the again. bottom of the barrel again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, so I've, I've moved a couple of times, right? You know, I mean, I, I grew up in Connecticut, then we moved down to Austin, then we moved back to Connecticut, but that was like, there was some, of course, there was some, you know, overlap there, but the bands that I played with were completely different, you know, both times, but there was some of that, Oh, you know, this guy. Yeah. And then he'd call that guy and like, Oh yeah, you want Dave as your drummer. Okay, great. You know, that helped. Um, and then of course moving up here and I, I thought moving up here would be like, Oh, it just like the last ones, like no problem. I just, you know, kind of cast my, my net and we'll see what happens and it'll all work out. And as soon as we got here, it was like, oh no, like I was, <laughs> I know the thought process you were going through, but obviously it's worked out fine. I mean, y- you know, you just do your thing and, uh, and I really, I, I know it sounds all, all fluffy and woo woo, but just keep playing, man. And, and that'll, uh, that'll, thanks. you know, that'll make it happen. Yeah. Well, I, in fact, I well, got to, I got to play this past week. I, I got, ah, um, tell me about it. yeah, we had our monkey fist gig. Any gig I play now could be the last of the year, right? Because, you know, it's getting colder. Certainly by the end of September, maybe I'd, I, I could possibly have gig opportunities in October, but uh, any of those could be rained out, you know, and then that's that. And so it, it was, it was somewhat emotional going into and playing Wednesday's gig with monkey fist knowing that, wow, this could be the last one. You know, we, we sort of knew when we played our, our gig before quarantine that like, eh, this could be it right. for a while. Like, you know, we were right on the cusp. In fact, I think 
I arrived at the gig. It was a Friday night gig and it was the day that South by Southwest had canceled, you know, which was only a week before they were supposed to have the show. It was very late cancellation, yeah. but you know, that's how things go with the pandemic. Um, and, and, and so that one, I mean, we sunk our teeth in and enjoyed it, but this one was a little more like, well, you know, unfortunately now we, we, we came into this one with the knowledge of what it's like to not know when you're going to play next, you, you know, right. and then obviously we've been very fortunate. We've had the opportunity to play a few times, but this one could have been the last one, but we played well. It was, you know, it was an outdoor gig. Um, it was a, a good setup. They had, um, it was at like this town, I, I'll call it a town park. They had a bunch of like, uh, you know, baseball fields and things like that. And a big pavilion, we set up under the pavilion, but none of the crowd was under the pavilion. Uh, they were all sort of in the sunshine uh, out outside of the pavilion. So it was kind of nice. It was nice to have a, a roof over us for some reflection and, and getting the sound pretty good and um, and all that. There was a playground right next to where we were playing. And I just kept looking over and there's like probably, you know, 25 kids just crawling all over each other in this playground. And people, people that were there were either masked or socially distanced, certainly were socially distanced. Some of them wore masks the whole time. Some of them wore masks as they came to their seats. And then of course there were some that, that didn't wear masks at all, but, but people certainly, you know, it, it checked both the boxes. I was able to be as safe as I wanted and the crowd could be as safe as they wanted for sure. But, you know, watching all these kids at the playground, it was like, man, that's yeah. like COVID gardens over there. I don't like, I, I mean, <laughs> I, you know, but I, but I don't know. I didn't talk to any of those people. Maybe, you know, I know a lot of uh, neighborhoods have organized their kids into pods, you know, where everybody is sort of, and they're not going back to school. So they're, that's their group. And they've either all been tested or quarantined enough to basically trust that, you know, they're not going to infect each other and that sort of thing. So I kept trying to tell myself, nope, all the kids playing on the playground, they're all in one pod together, but it seemed like a lot of, it seemed like a lot of kids, Paul. <laughs> well, I, yeah, it, well, it seems just like you're assigning too much forethought and, and, uh, and intelligence to it. I mean, that's the lesson of all this, right. You know, given, given, wiggle room of subjective yeah. decision-making, right. You know, you're, you're going to get a lot of different decisions. Yeah. And, and every, yeah. every one of us is making subjective, de like subjective decision-making. I am not immune to it. I just make different subjective decisions, right? Like, you know, we yeah. got, we got fling together for the first time on Friday afternoon since the pandemic began and Russ hosted us outside of his house. Uh, we just played acoustic and it was just really, it was just three of us. It was just Russ and Mike, the two guitar players and me, uh, and we, we played for, I don't know, two and a half hours or something. And we had a blast out there, but the beauty is I live in a town with the university of New Hampshire, the university of New Hampshire has, uh, spent the summer retooling all of their labs to be COVID test processing labs. And that means that every student and teacher is being tested. I think the students are all being tested twice a week. The teachers, uh, I think are at least once a week, maybe twice a week. So, you know, all three of us came into that that jam having had a test within the last five days. And, and so we all felt really comfortable. Um, so we, you know, we kind of have it in that band. We at least have the two of them by default. And of course you all know me, I've been crazy about getting tested anyway. So yep. we've got three of us by default that are always sort of relatively up to date on that sort of thing. And we all felt comfortable with it, but you know, when I got there, we all had masks on and I, I said to, to Russ and Mike, I said, are you guys comfortable if we remove our masks? And they said, yeah, are you comfortable? I said, yeah. And so then we, you know, had the mask removal ceremony and uh, we didn't hug each other. We didn't touch each other. We stayed about, you know, six feet apart from each other the whole time anyway, which we probably would have done regardless of, of, you know, it's just sort of a comfortable distance to sit outside and jam. But, um, yeah. you know, but it was really nice to, to, to do that with fling again. It had been too long. So that was, well, one of the things that came out of the last house rocker zoom was that the rhythm section you know, has a desire to get together. Yeah. And, um, you know, so we may do that in October. And um, the question is, is whether we should do it in Nick's garage where we practice mm. or whether I should find something bigger. We should do it masked in Nick's garage and where we should test before we rehearse and, you know, all these types of things. So sure. we got a month to figure that stuff out. But you know, yeah, like I've said many times, I mean, it, it feels to me, I know mostly nobody is working. You know, some people are making a little bit of noise on on social media that they have gotten a gig, but most of those gigs are like a private party in someone's backyard. That's 
Yeah. See that it's, it's, it's fascinating comparing the, the difference. Obviously you and I have some people that are the same in our social circles, but not everybody. Yeah. And you've got, you know, your local musician friends that you connect with. And I have my local musician friends mm -hmm. and like the next three or four weeks, uh, one, it, many people have many gigs. In fact, one friend of mine is booked every night for at least the next 15 nights, I think. Wow. Outdoor gigs, you know, like, I mean, all it, on the surface, all very realistic scenarios. Uh, but, but yeah. The it, basic uh, vibe here is they don't want people to congregate, right? They, 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 that is the, that is the approach yep. in this County is that, um, you know, like I know one musician was offered a gig, um, but it could be instrumental only no vocals and no, 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 no woodwinds or horns or anything yeah, right. that project anything. Yeah. So, so nothing that can project anything, but in general, like, I saw someone ask, you know, are, are duos or singles or trios able to work anywhere? And the res interesting response was, no, the, the rules in this county are mm. designed because they, you know, even though, you know, you're trying to let people go out for a meal, they really want you to get in, have your meal and get out. They, they don't it. want people congregating. And that's, mm. that's the philosophical approach to how they're. Yeah. Cause all these gigs, doing. all these gigs here are at, like restaurants, outdoor seated restaurants where people, yeah. you know, there's, you can't congregate at a bar, you know, there's no standing around or any of that kind of thing. In fact, a lot of these places, the, the bar is entirely, you know, if they have an outdoor bar, which lots of these places do around here, as you might imagine, uh, the outdoor bar is closed. You know, the only thing you can do is table service, uh, with, you know, with the wait staff and the yeah. tables are all separated apart as you would imagine and all that. So, Yeah. Yeah, but I can, I, I mean, I, I, I see where your county's going with it. They don't want people just lingering. Um, That's it. But, but there, there are no gigs. The flip side, the flip side to that is, if people aren't lingering you're turning your tables over. Now, obviously that's good <clears throat> from a tipping standpoint, usually, although I think if you are going out now, you should be, you know, over tipping like a crazy person. For sure. Uh, For that's sure. certainly been my experience any of the few times that I've been out. Um, but that's just me. So maybe I, I shouldn't have said should, I should have just shared my experience. Don't want to tell anybody what to do, but I kind of do. <laughs> uh, I have, I feel very strongly about this. Uh, if you're looking to save money, stay home. Um, but, if people do come out for a show, right, you know, a two hour show or something where they get a table and they sit for the table for the show, not having that turnover, not having, you know, groups of people coming and going throughout the event, arguably adds some level of, of safety to it. Um, I agree. You know, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's, it's all quite fascinating. And of course here within the next six weeks, it's all just going to end because no more outdoor gigs unless, yeah. Unless we, unless something else happens in 2020 and our climate changes and you know what, it wouldn't surprise me, Paul, but that's just that. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So talking about, about shows and yeah. you know what you can do, I've, I've been thinking about, I've been using my time to kind of re and especially given the move and knowing that the first thing I'm going to try and do is get some solo gigs and just kind of thinking about my approach to these solo gigs. And I just kind of want to share with you, yeah. you know, kind of my headspace on it. And, and it's kind of a funny thing because it really comes down to a question of discipline and some musicians are great at discipline. Some musicians discipline is a box that is oppressive and, you know, is hard to, uh, is hard to, you know, to deal with. Some sure. people are, are naturally talented enough that they can walk into any situation and maybe they're, maybe they're naturally talented and they had the discipline at one point in their time yes. to get their chops. To, right. So yeah, so, you, you know, can, it can like look like it's undisciplined, but yet what it took to get to that point was a great totally amount fair. of discipline. Right. Like, I mean, you don't know unless you know. Yeah. So my approach to acoustic shows has been, uh, at first, I just knew what I knew and I would play them. And then as, as my <laughs> list grew and, and, you know, or as people would, would request something and it'd be, Oh, I haven't thought about that song for a while. You know, the list becomes long and I have so many lists of, you know, of material. What I've been trying to do is say, all right, when I get to go back out there, especially since I'm a new guy, I need to have my best stuff. I need, I, I'm not going to give myself the latitude to, to do any vanity songs. I'm going to do the stuff I know it hits and works and flies. And so, you know, I came up with a list of my A-list. And then I took my A-list of songs and I started saying, well, okay, what makes for an interesting acoustic show? So to me, 
what's interesting is not just kind of playing cowboy chords and strumming your way through folk campfire songs for a couple hours. So I said, I, I know I want to X amount of finger picking songs. Hmm. I know I want to X amount of songs that are in altered tuning. So just the sound bends the ear in a different way. For people, Smart. You know, right. So, so that's another way that I started to look at it. I started to look at, you know, songs that kind of had different emotional upbeat songs, mid tempo songs, love songs, that type of thing. And all of a sudden my list has got, you know, 500 different arms to it. And I'm back up to a list of about a hundred songs. Yeah. Of things that, <laughs> And then I go back and say, all right, but of these hundred songs, do I really know them inside and out and can play them in my sleep and do that? So then sure. you go back and you kind of rejigger and all these types of things. And so I want to, I, I want to dig into one thing that you said there, because I think there's a good list here of, of the things that make songs different. And, and, and this certainly could be extrapolated out to a full band thing and perhaps even adding more variety points to the list. But you listed quite a few there and I was trying to capture them, but I don't think I got them all. Uh, you know, different tunings to make things sound different to the, to the listener, right? Different yep. tempos, finger picking, finger picking versus strumming. I like it. Yep. 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 Different sound of the instrument. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 What, what, what else could, I mean, what else do we have there? We've got tempo tuning. Well, I have, I have upbeat sound. songs, love yep. songs, you know, mid tempo songs of which, you know, in the acoustic genre, they share a lot. Yeah, a and lot, then actually yeah. the other way that I sliced it is, I started thinking about the different artists that I t gravitate to mm. and what are, what are the songs I know by each artist. And then again, then, then, you know, there's the songs I really know and the songs I'm just a couple, you know, an hour away from locking down. Yeah. But that, you know, I, I have a little bit of ADD with this type of stuff. I, you know, I love so many songs. I kind of get compliant enough and would throw them into a set list. Now they're kind of in my, in my brain, but they really need some, finish polishing yeah. in order to truly be gig ready. Right. So that's what I'm saying is like all those, all those thinking by yeah, artists. Well, yeah, you need to know them. Right. Feel, yeah. You know, yeah. by, by sound, I just kind of slice it each way. And, and, to, and changing key too. I mean, I, I realize yeah. changing your tuning is, is one way of accomplishing that, but that's a little bit different because that's going to, like you said, that's going to change the, the timbre of the, of the guitar uh, or of your yes. instrument in general, but just making sure that you don't play, you know, four songs in a row that are all in G or if you do yes. be intentional about it, you, you know, because people will get, get, you know, tuned out to that. If it's just like, yeah. Oh, it's the same thing over and over again. You know, that's cool. If oh, you the other thing that I do segue is, and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. The, the other category I had was I wanted to have, um, a couple of looping songs and I didn't want to do a whole show of looping, but I did want to do a couple songs where I could solo over, over changes yeah. and, yeah. you know, add that kind of feel. And, and also when you're looping, you can add sort of a kind of a percussive aspect to it. And so, you know, I don't want to say they're dance songs, but they're, again, there's just a different sound yes. in a different mood. And depending upon whether I'm playing in the corner of, of a patio of a restaurant, which I don't take too many of those things and, but I'm going to have to here in order to kind of build up my absolutely you know, audience. Yeah. You got right? Yeah. So you got to, yep. You got to swallow a little bit of that, 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 well, I don't want to call it pride or ego, but it's, it's your, your, the list of your preferences needs to yes. become less important for at least yes. a little while. Yes. <laughs> yes. I create, I created a little bit of leeway for myself after doing it for so long in, in one neighborhood. And right. now I got to do that again. So, so again, what songs work well with that? And oh, sing-alongs. Like, you oh, know, yeah. if people are paying attention and I want to really grab them, what are the songs that everybody loves to hear? How many of the songs are are drop dead? I Everybody knows these songs, right? Yep. And how many of the songs can I just do? Because, you know, that's a little bit of the artistic reach for me. What songs that I really feel passionate about can I introduce to people where they come up to me saying, what was that song? You know, that was really cool. And again, I, you can't do two hours of that because they're not going to remember two hours of stuff. And, right. and yeah. you know, it's, it's but, enough trouble for us to remember two hours of lyrics. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, just, you know, if one or two songs in, in a, in a set, um, I can introduce, you know, something that I know really well, or, you know, and then, you know, what songs do you want to bring back from uh, different eras? So there's so many ways to can kind of conceptualize this. And again, now my list is a hundred songs yeah. and I got to get it down to, you know, 12 to 15 songs per hour. And, um, I really want to get back to my, do you my find that with an acoustic gig, you're still able to, to stretch 12 to 15 songs for an hour acoustic? I always find acoustic. It's more like 18 or 19. 
Um, no, I mean, again, you know, they're four minute songs yeah. in general. And I actually try to talk to the people, you know, if, if they're paying attention, they want to Got talk it. to me. Yeah. And so that, you know, there's a little bit of space in between that, you know, is part of the vibe that you're setting that, that I do. And again, some other people just come in, set up and play their stuff. And, you know, that's what you hired me for and that type of thing. Yeah. But I'm trying to get people to follow me. You know, I'm trying yeah. to get, make a connection. Yeah. Is that, sure. that at least that's what works for me. You know, some people's oh. chops are so good. That's what will work for them, right? Absolutely. No, you play to your own strengths, man, of course. Yeah. So it sounds to me, you know, I'm, I, I, I think a lot about like productivity in general and, and hacking my brain so that I wind up being productive by accident. You know, it's, it's, it's a thing I think about a lot and I'm a, because of that, I'm a big fan of systems because when you put a system together, you don't have to think about I, discipline, right? I yeah. think about discipline as, you know, will or discipline slash willpower. I, we all wake up every day or I wake up every day with a limited amount of willpower points to spend in a given day. So I try to organize systems so that things get done, things that I wouldn't want to do get done because I want to complete the system. And, and by creating this, this thing that I want to do that encompasses things I don't want to do, I haven't had to spend any willpower points, which is great. You know, like <laughs> even doing the, like the podcast is a great example us doing you now this, I mean, this show is your idea, but the idea of doing a podcast with a co-host really appeals to me because I want to be seen as a reliable person to my friends, AKA you. So even though, you know, I didn't sleep all that well last night, my back was sort of messed up and all this other thing. It was like, well, I'm definitely like, if it was up to me to record the show today, I would have taken a nap, but it wasn't up mm. to me. It was up to us, right? I have a system in mm. place. I wanted to do the show because I wanted to make sure we hit our commitments to each other, you know, that sort of thing. So like those sorts of systems versus discipline are a big, like it's a big thing for me as you, as you might now be, be figuring yeah. out. And, and what you've just described here where you're mixing up your show by all of these, you know, you've created, a, you've created the, the bones of a system and now you get to the gig and now you're excited about trying out the, this version of the system and you'll put some energy into set list because you've, you've essentially hacked your brain into this, this thing where you want to do this, which is great. Well, a set list is a system, right? You, it is a you system. conceptualize the set, set list as I want to open strong yep. and then I want to get emotional and then I want people to dance and you know, that's a system. And so plugging things in there and you're right, you know, that, that takes a little bit of the guesswork. It at least lays out a plan that, you know, gets you to a destination. And, that's, and you can always change course mid plan too. Like that's sure. the thing I love about having a set list is it gives me the freedom to experiment. And then if I really, if it's like, Oh, this experiment's going nowhere. Okay, great. Wait, what was the thing I, when I was being intentional about this at my house, you know, very cr carefully crafting a set list. What was the thing I, I decided to play next? It's like, Oh, it's right there. I don't have to think about it. I just go back to the list. And if inspiration strikes even better. No problem. Yep. So, yep. yeah. So anyway, that's, that's kind cool. of the messy inner reaches of my brain these days is trying to balance my breadth wide thinking yeah. about, about song selection with funneling it through some discipline so that, you know, when I get gigs, you know, I can play stuff that is, I'm pretty confident is going to work well. I can still have my list of stuff to go grab, you know, if, if it seems like this is a crowd, that would go there. But if not, you know, I got stuff that'll show me in the best light and, you know, sound good and be yeah. pleasant for everybody involved. And I enjoy playing. And so, you know, but it's, uh, it's like I said, I started out with, all right, I need, I need 30 songs, go through that list of, you know, 200 songs I have yeah. and pick the top there. And then all of a sudden I started dicing and dicing and dicing and categorizing and, you know, thinking about it in so many abstract ways. That's fun and though. Back up to hundred. It, it is, is a lot of fun. And I love all these songs. And actually, you know, maybe the right answer is as a musician, you know, just twist the problem on its side a little bit. I should really have a hundred songs. I know dead cold, right? Yes. Not, not, you know, and I have the time now to make that happen. So, you know, why not do that as opposed to just, uh, you know, extracting the 30 songs that are, are you know, have a hundred songs that work. Sure. And, uh, but you know, yeah, you the, o the only flip side that I will offer to folks and, you know, you are, uh, you know, deep into your career, you have a lot of experience, you know, you know, to how to avoid some of the more common pitfalls. 
there is a pitfall of preparation paralyzation, right? Where you're mm. like, oh, we're not ready to play yet. And you can, like, I could even now, if I took, you know, let, let, well, forget, let's, for a moment, can we pretend and forget pandemic? Cool. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> let, let's pretend it's, it's, you know, March 1st and there's no concerns and it's like, all right, cool. Well, you know, Fling has a gig coming up. No problem. Like, I, you know, I, like that band is in great shape. You know, we, we have playing together regularly. We just can go out and do it. No, we've proven it many times. No problem. But I could say, well, gosh, you know, I don't know if that we should take this gig. You know, I, uh, Aaron hasn't been at rehearsal for a few weeks and you know, like I can always come up with an excuse that is valid in my own head, rationalized to, you know, decide, well, let's wait. Certainly when you're starting out that those excuses are even more valid, right? You know, if you haven't ever played a gig yet, well, then it's really easy to say you're not ready because the reality is you won't be ready to play a gig until you've played five or 10 with a band. You know, every band I'm in always takes the first gig sometimes is like amazing. Because it's everybody's, you know, on high alert, things go well. And then you get that sophomore slump that usually lasts like three or four gigs. And then things click in, everybody's, you know, on top of it. And then you realize back, you look back and you're like, you know, that first gig wasn't actually as good as we felt like it was, but it felt pretty good in the moment. But really now we're, we're hit, starting to hit our stride and that's what you have to do. And so I, I know, you know that Paul, but you know, just for anybody listening, get out there, do start playing. There's nothing that says you can't be refining your system or your set list or whatever it is throughout that process. In fact, you should be refining your set list. You will be, you will find yourself doing that. So I, and here's the flip side to that. There is a lovely velvet glove of comfort when you just play your set. You know, when you have a set of well-rehearsed stuff yes. and you're committed to it, there is a, there is a, out of body experience that you're not thinking about anything except promoting your music. So, you, you know, you find, and you find which one works for you. you yeah. Know, I, I mean, if you go over, you go over at the end of the day, whether you're, if you're. Yeah. Are you entertained as you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. did you get the gig and can you keep the gig? I guess is the, That's is the, the ultimate. Test. Yes. Every, was everybody <laughs> happy when you arrived and are they happy? <laughs> Are they happy about you having been there? I was going to say, are they happy that you're leaving? But that that could happen for a variety of reasons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but are they talking about bringing you back? That's a good thing. Hey, I I have a question here, and I like I literally thought of this as we were talking through it, and you know we did a bunch of sing alongs the other night with this Monkey Fist gig. In in these times, so we, we we're going to have to stop pretending for me to ask this question. So we're back to the reality with with oh. the pandemic. I'm sorry. Are sing-alongs a responsible thing to do right now? Like, I never thought about this. Uh, you know, thinking back on it, I think we were okay with it. But, you know, the idea of making sure the crowd remains safe. If suddenly you have the crowd singing, uh, you know, are they now projecting more? And I realize the science on on singing versus talking, it keeps sort of changing whether whether singing is actually any worse uh, in terms of projecting specifically COVID-19 and, and all that versus talking. But, um, but you know, should, should, should we survey the crowd and their social distancing before we opt to bring them down the path of a sing-along? It's safe if you're streaming. It's safe if you're streaming. That <laughs> is true. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a little weird. I have done some sing-alongs, like, like watching friends, you know, and then singing along. I've sang along with you, in fact. So, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's a it's it, I didn't even think about it until we were, you know, talking through the mixing up your show. It's a like, good question. Fair question. Yeah, like think about that. If you're if you're on stage and suddenly you're worried about how packed your audience is together, you might want to go for those mid-tempo numbers and just keep them calm, keep them in their seats, <laughs> you know. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, you don't want them to be tempted to get up and start moving around and things like that if if they're not distant enough to to do that. I don't know, it's just a Hold, I never even thought about it until just now. So I don't, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Back about reality. That. Yeah, old reality. Yeah. 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 <laughs> ah, yep. Old reality, man. I look forward to when uh, we figure out our path through this. That's for sure. Someone, someone shared with me. I look forward to going back to living in precedented times. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've, um, the, the language of that, I, I've found myself not saying going back to or 
or, you know, getting out of this scenario, it's getting through this scenario. And I, I think that's just me setting myself up for what's realistic. Like, I, I think we, we don't get to try and sidestep this. We have to find our way through it because I think this is going to go on for a while. Sure. It feels like it. And yeah. There's, there's not a lot of it. We live, we, we live day to day. Right. With no real plan. I mean, I, I know in California we wake up and mm-hmm. you know, the governor talks to us a while and, you know, they'd still please wear a mask, please social distance. It's Groundhog when the Day, load, man. When the caseload goes down, we'll make adjustments to what is okay. And when the, you know, the death rate goes down, yep. we'll make adjustments to what it is. But, you know. Yep. <laughs> I do know. Vac- va- yeah. <laughs> vaccines are, you know, they're, they're a unicorn right now, right? Yeah, they I don't. May, may not come. They may, I don't spend they a lot come. of time banking on vaccine. I've I've heard, you know, and I think I even probably was of this mindset initially. But I, I hear people saying, "Oh, you know, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to do X before there's a vaccine." In fact, I was talking to uh, uh, somebody that works at a company, and they were saying, "Oh, yeah, our travel is." Uh, on hold until there's a vaccine. And obviously the company can change their policy at any point in time, you know, they they can revisit and change it. But I thought that that was a really interesting thing to, to place your, the future of your company, you know, at least the, the travel, you know, on, like you said, a unicorn. It's like, yeah, until, until it exists, I'm I'm not banking on that at all. So that's why I'm a big fan of the testing because it's, uh, it's something we can do. It's here today. So yeah, for sure. yeah, Yeah, for sure. All right. And I, uh, I know you and I are both very fortunate to live in places where it's relatively easy to get tested if we want. That's not, it, it turns out that's not true everywhere. Um, not, not even close. Like when we went to Oregon, when we, when we had to go to Oregon, I tried to schedule a test for right after we arrived, you know, be, trying to be responsible traveler and all of that stuff. And, you know, trying to see if we brought this thing into their community, et cetera. And it mm-hmm. was like, oh, no, 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 no. There, you can't just go get tested here. You need, you know, a reason you need a doctor. And I was like, wow. Okay. I'm lucky my kid's school is testing them twice a week as surveillance testing. In fact, I'm very, very thankful for that. So, yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to bring us down there. So. Yeah. All right. So anyway, um, I just keep sharing with you how this goes. I think it's yeah. kind of interesting to, you know, trying to get something new going in a new place after being established in one place. I hope that's interesting to you. I mean, it's cathartic for me to kind of express it to you as no, I'm kind of going through it. it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a valuable thing to me. I mean, it, it, I, I've been through it. Um, there's always a chance that I will go through it again. You know, the, the conversations about where we will live are, are more frequent now that we are empty nesters here, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, no. And I think it's really helpful for our listeners, even like everything you're going through is relevant to somebody who just left a band in and hasn't even moved, but now is looking to, you know, get themselves uh, out there in a different way. Let's say you were with a band for 10 years and then, you know, things fell apart because of quarantine and, and COVID and all that. <clears throat> and that's a very realistic scenario. And it's like, oh crap, I haven't said yes. I haven't even asked somebody for a gig in 10 years because I've had them with, you know, with, with a band. And now what do you do? So I think this is, I think your, your journey here is, is a very relevant one for our, all of us for a variety of reasons, you know? Yeah. Well, good. It, yeah. It, like I said, I, I'm getting more from the conversations than I'm giving, but um, it, it, it's, it's good to talk about it, I think. And oh. Yeah. No, you gave, I, I mean, I, I think this list of, of, uh, of, of factors to, by which to vary your set list up was a hugely valuable thing. And look, we've done this show five years and that list never came up. We've both thought about it. We both think about it all the time. I'm sure when we're building set lists at, at some level, either, you know, at top of mind or somewhere percolating below the surface, but um, but that's a, I mean, that's a great list. So that'll be in the show notes at giggabpodcast.com. Well, good. I'd, I'd love to hear from people out there, you know, how you approach your solo and duo gigs and, you know, how you conceptualize the songs that you want to do. Do you just get a set together and, and you know, you know, you kill it and that's your show for this year or this month or whatever it is? Or, you know, do you have a big library of songs to choose from and, uh, and uh, you mix it up to keep it interesting for you and, you know, keep that fresh feel going. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't, there's not a right or wrong. I mean, if people are loving it, people are loving it. I, I, I know musicians who are, are 
pretty uh, loose with lyrics and loose with changes, but they're such darn likable people. They've got fans and they get booked and they do, you know, they, they get their shows. Yep. Right. And then I know people who are fastidious about, you know, detail. Um, I know people who go very wide and, you know, they, like my buddy Steve does a all request show, right? Yeah. He, you know, will take, sometimes he does them on the fly. Sometimes he gets, he, he, for the streaming shows, he requests the request during the week. He prepares um, a playlist on his pod, on his iPad. And, you know, he reads them down as he goes. I mean, you know, they're, they're not perfect, but they're really entertaining. There is no right, you know, if you're making people happy. If And that goes back to that thing. Like, if you've got a winning personality, that's part of your deal. Right. You, you get to leverage you, that. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you spent, you know, 30 years, 20 years in the woodshed and, you know, you've earned the right to show off your chops and it connects with people and moves people, do that. Right? Awesome. And yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what do they say? You know, most overnight successes take about 20 years. Right. So that's uh, right. There's, there's something to that, I think. And, uh, and I think we, we, we touched on a few things here this, uh, this week. So yeah, this is good, man. Yeah, sure. All, right, All right, folks. Well, that uh, that does it for us today. If uh, if you have any thoughts whatsoever, anything, feedback at giggabpodcast.com, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your additions to the list, your thoughts. Are you playing? What are you thinking about? What are you band? How are you talking with your band about it? Let us know. What else should they always let us be know performing? That's what they should always, 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 always. Later. Always.